Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewers discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to Killer Trait. So the developer has recently released an extended demo of this, including additional voice acting as well as an additional scene which wraps up the prologue. It's a game where you have to work alongside a serial killer to prove your own innocence. And my god, he's hot. Anyway, let's get right into it, shall we? What time is it? It's 7.30 a.m. Okay, still good. Thank God I set the alarm yesterday. Properly this time. No matter how much I want to, binge watching anime so late into the night isn't a good idea when I have to wake up early. Well, not every night at least. As soon as I give my limbs a good stretch, I check the notifications on my Hoodle calendar. Big day at work, get up super early. My lips form a smile. Once I finish brushing my teeth, I get dressed and grab my satchel. Wait, I'm missing something. I give a quick glance at the room until I find what I'm looking for right on top of my desk. Here you are, you little rascal you. I pick it up. It reads, and put your name. What? Hey, <laughs> lion. Choose your pronouns. They, uh, they, them. This identification and card certifies that Lion Darby, who uses they, them pronouns, is commissioned as a criminal profiler by the police department of Silvering City. Heh. <laughs> soon, very soon, there will be a completely new word written on this ID. Just you wait. All right, let's do this. This looks familiar. First things first. Yeah, I can't start the day without a good breakfast. And I forgot I ran out of food. <sighs> Man, I love living by myself. Having to buy groceries constantly is such a pain in the butt. I hope that one day online delivery evolves to such an extent that everything can you buy gets teleported right into your kitchen. Does it hurt to dream, right? Anyway, not much I can do in the grass of reality. Yeah, I guess I'll just grab something at a coffee shop or whatever. Huh. Are there any good ones nearby? Have I had much of a chance to visit any food establishment since I moved to this neighborhood? Yeah, I'd take up my phone from my jacket and start browsing cafes with decent hoodle reviews. Let's see here. Cup of coffee, 4.5 stars, 25 reviews. Never heard of this one before. Maybe it's relatively new. It does seem like a nice enough place, and the food looks cute, which is always great in my book. Yeah, I'm sold. Keys in hand, I walk to the door. And head out. I like the last couple of days, which were constantly threatened by the heavy rain forecast. This morning is bright, sunny, and there's a breeze in the air. Yes, the storm passed right through instead of gracing us with its presence. I walk along the road of Golden Meadow, slowly but surely getting closer to my destination. Well, at least according to Hoodle Maps. Yeah, I don't usually head this way when I go to work. My brain is usually in auto mode in the mornings. Especially if I need to get somewhere quick. Like, well, my job if you'll forgive the repetition. Maybe I should reconsider changing my route from time to time. For such a bustling city, this park is pretty chill. Yeah, I don't think I've seen more than a few joggers and one or two people walking their dogs. Still, why is it called Golden Meadows? Wouldn't it make more sense to call it Silver Meadows, given that we're in Silvering City and all that jazz? The trees don't even get that golden during fall. Yeah, I definitely need more coffee if I'm already thinking about some random stuff like this. Two blocks of walking later, my journey has come to an end. You've arrived at your destination. Yeah, I close Hoodle Maps and enter the cafe. The distinct smell of coffee hits me straight away. Several pastries can be seen near the register too. It's not that big of a place, but it really isn't that small either. In fact, the size is just right. It adds to the coziness. I glance out at pictures and the reviews once again. They're certainly eye-catching, but they don't do it justice. It really goes without saying. There are some things in life that are better to see for yourself. Welcome. 
A warm greeting from a cashier brings me right back to Earth. The name's Arthur. What will you be having today? Well, I will be having you, Arthur. Hi. Sorry, I was a bit distracted. First time? Yeah, I guess it was too obvious, huh? <laughs> Arthur laughs. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to ask him why he's wearing his coat like that. What can I say? You're not the only first-timer to get lost in thought as soon as they enter. Scratch that. Why is he wearing one in the first place when he works indoors? Wouldn't a sweater make more sense? But to be fair, I do make this place look as charming as possible. Maybe it's a new trend. Moving on. Let's actually be part of conversation line. Wow, you own this place. Right on. That's really cool. Uh, I don't know many cafes where you see the owner on the job. You work here by yourself, Arthur? I do have another employee who helps me bake pretty often, but recently he's been handling deliveries whenever he's not at his uh, other jobs. Other jobs? Like what? Stabby stabby time? You call it a job? I mean, heck, I mean, it, it is a lot of work. Eh, it's not a big cafe, so I don't have to worry too much. I see. Well, that was weird. Does this employee have a strange side job or something? Do they also wear the coat like Arthur here? Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I was just trying to make small talk, but uh, got a bit sidetracked. Are you ready to order? Ah, right. That's why I came in the first place, all. Uh, let's see. A glance at a menu hanging by the wall. Apart from coffee, tea, and juice, there seems to be a moderate variety of pastries and a few savory options. A latte bears, bear cappuccino, blueberry pie, Teddy Barrel, Hamburger, Bernard's Cobble Tea? Someone here is really fun of bears. And puns. Also, who is Bernard? I'm having a bit of a trouble deciding. Do you have any recommendations? Wow. First things first. Do you happen to be vegetarian or vegan? Yeah, now I'm good with everything. Yeah, I'm good with anything. It's nice to see you have more options, though. Right on. And this is for here or to go? Yeah, it's for to go. Hopefully, this gives me the energy boost I needed. Ah, is it an important day? You could say that. Arthur smiles and nods. Of course. Give me five. Arthur heads towards the machine a few steps from re register and in no time starts grinding some coffee beans. When he's done with that, I see him grab what looks like a milk frother and it's then that I realize he's making a latte. Once there's enough foam, Arthur raised the froth milk to a relatively high position and begins pouring it into a paper cup. The more the cups get spilled, the lower he steeped his hand until there's nothing left to pour. Finally, he covers the latte with a lid and grabs the pastry from the glass display. Thank you for waiting. Here's our takeaway latte cup. If you need an energy boost, this'll do the trick. Aw, oh, that's cute! The latte Arthur gives me has an adorable sticker with the logo of the cafe on top of the cardboard sleeve. Yes, this little one is Bernard. Cub of coffee. It really is a fitting name. And this is one of our most popular pastries, the Berry Big Bun. My god, it's filled with custard. Much like its name, the bun is shaped like a bear. A very big bear. Thank you, Arthur. These look so good! Can't wait to try them. Glad to hear it. Have a good day now, won't you? A very good day. <laughs> Did you have to throw in that pun too? Tch, I definitely will now. See ya. Come again. Arthur raises a hand in farewell as I exit the shop. That took a little longer than I thought. It's okay. Does it hurt to have a little push once in a while? I take out my phone to check the time. Hey, 30. Oh god, I'm gonna be late! God, I'm dying. Note to self, don't run while trying not to spill any coffee. Or any of your belongings for that matter. Actually, don't run when going to work, period! Thank god this lid is tougher than a freaking marmalade jaw. At least I won't be late now. Still, it's kind of a miracle that I didn't bump into anyone. Ruby Road is pretty crowded today. All waiting for the street light to change. I take a look at my berry bun. That chunkiness. That shine. It's like it's calling to me. Okay, if you look at me like that, I guess I'll have to take a bye. Hey, you! Get out of the way! What? I see a bicycle approaching. Yeah! Duh. What the? No! The bear bun died!
It succumbed to a bicycle's wheel! You've got to be kidding me! That voice. Hi, cutie! I turn around to spot the identity of the bear butt murderer. He hasn't fared much better. The delivery backpack he was carrying has spilled some of its contents, too. How in- How did my latte survive but not these? The guy glares at me. You. What about me, huh? Why didn't you move when I told you to, dumbass? Excuse me? I better not risk it, I apologize. Screw this guy, I got mad. I don't want to give the, him the time of the day, ignore him. I'll apologize. It was solely his fault, maybe just a little bit of my fault too. But I don't know this guy. Maybe he's violent? And I really don't want to flash my ID for something like this. Or maybe he's just having a bad day. Hey! Are you listening? Sorry. Was he not expecting that? Yeah, I'm sorry, it's true that I wasn't paying attention, so they yeah, are partially responsible. Even so, please, you should try to be more attentive too. Thankfully, it was just some food this time. Someone could have really gotten hurt, you know. Let's both try to be more careful from now on. Um... <sighs> okay, whatever. Right, right, bye! I completely forgot what your name was from my last playthrough of this! As best as he can manage, the guy retrieves the spilled contents from the ground and puts them away in his delivery backpack before hopping onto his bike once again. Sorry. Then he leaves. Well, that was something. I throw the right bear butt into a nearby trash can. It's a shame. But I'll just buy another one later. Yeah, <sighs> made it. Barely. It's almost 9 a.m. Well, at least I'm not late. Yeah, after taking the elevator and walking down the third floor hallway, I arrive at the office of the Criminal Investigations Department. Close call, eh? Oh, hi, Carl. Not even a minute has gone by and I already have the pleasure of having to deal with my desk neighbor. I almost thought you wouldn't make it. Why does Carl sound hot? God, I swear to God. Pre, pre current I know you're probably watching this, okay? You're probably watching this. Please, for the love of God, in a full game, let us see Carl in his full glory. You can't give us a voice this hot and expect us not to simp over Carl. Also, for the VA, hey, good job with this. Anyway, not like you. Not like you at all. Blood ran cold or something? Yeah, Sif. I just got break for somewhere else and it was... Whatever helps you sleep at night, kiddo. Ah, uh, shut up, Carl! <laughs> he laughs. Anyway... Lion, hate to cut the conversation short, but I need to take care of some really important business. Okay... <gasps> Carl puts a hand on his chest in a faint shock. Come on, kiddo. You're not even going to ask what? Oh, for the love of... No! Patience, Lion. Remember, today is special. Sure, Carl. What's this important business? It's confidential. I have a strong urge to throw my monitor so it conveniently lands on his head. <laughs> you should see the look on your face. Ah, uh, uh, well. I guess I can tell you. He swivels his office chair around and scoots over to shorten the distance. Then, he leans into me with his hand close to his mouth, like he's about to reveal a secret. Hmm... Do you know David from second floor? The engineer? Yeah, yeah, him. Turns out, he bought the wrong SD card for the surveillance cameras at the detention center. And you know this how? Hmm... Carl grins. Anyway... I happened to arrive early and saw him panic on the phone. Probably talking to his partner or something. Thing is, Guy was scared shitless. Going off about how the cabs would go full at any moment. About how he could lose his job. Which, to be fair, yeah, he could. Can he go buy a replacement? No can do. He's gotta check to see CTV cams from the latest crime scene, kiddo. Ah, oh, now that you mention it. Anyway... He said he'd replace them tomorrow morning without fail. Again, you know this how? Hmm. He gives me a knowing smile. Really, Carl? You could get turned in for this. What makes you think I won't say anything to the boss? No, kiddo. David's not the only one I've got dirt on. 
Who else? <laughs> Wearing a triumphant smile, he scoots away and stops right at his working spot. Carlisle Renard, better known as Carl, is one of the people who's been working here the longest. For how long though, nobody knows, and nobody in the department dares to ask him. Including me. And I don't think he's that much older than us, yet he calls everyone kiddo for some reason. Well, everyone except for our division's boss and chief of police. And I could never tell if Carl's blackmailing schemes are just for show or the real deal. How did someone like him become a chief? How did someone like him become a police officer? Whatever. I get to my own work area right next to the pile of boxes. Someone should really take these away. Why do you think I just stole so many paper files? Just digitize everything! We're in the 21st century for Pete's sake! Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I also had the time to vent your frustrations on a massive cardboard line. <laughs> right as I turn on my monitor, I hear the unmistakable laugh of my superior. Partner! Lion, my darling partner. Aslan! You son of a gun! You terrible human being, but are too sexy for me to get mad at for too long. I mean, heck, I don't mind being thrown into handcuffs by you again. Anyway, morning, boss. Yikes. No, I told you to stop calling me that. It feels so cold and formal. Come on, what did we just talk about the other day? But Soon enough, we'll be equals, you know. Calling me boss won't be an accurate description anymore. So, why not get used to calling me by my name starting now? Equals, huh? I mean... That's only if I succeed in finding a criminal, right? Lion, lion! That was just a figure of speech! Do you really think that a chief will go back in his words after all the hard work he put in the past few years? Now, let's try again. Morning, lion. Morning, Aslan. That's amazing! Yeah, the bean! That wasn't so hard now, was it? I guess not. You think this bundle of energy is my boss? Although I see him almost every day, it's very hard to believe sometimes. Unless he's using his out of his world analytical skills, that is. He's not a chief for criminal investigations department for nothing. And once the day's over, I'm going to work alongside him as a fellow detective from now on. No more mixed assistant. So, where did we leave off yesterday? There was a lead on Tiger's possible whereabouts. Ah, that's right. Any news on that regard? Unfortunately, just a person claiming to be him. Are you for real? God, what is wrong with these people? Do they seriously think serial killers are a joke? As if I didn't have enough already with the dumbasses ringing the headquarters thinking they've figured out the culprit just because they read murder on the Orient Express. Oh my god, I, I forgot how charming this visual novel is. There's still all sorts of people in this world. Unbelievable. <sighs> I guess I can see the charm in claiming to be a defender of justice. It's not- it's just not the right way. A murderer is still a murderer. God, he can get scary sometimes. Well, on the bright side, we do know quite a few important details regarding Tiger, don't you think? He's a man possibly in his late 20s to early 30s with outstanding physical capabilities. He always uses a sharp object as his killing method, most likely a knife. He's bound to use some sort of camouflage or disguise to lower people's guards. And... I take out an envelope from my satchel. He always leaves a calling card. Are you for real? How did you get that? Shouldn't forensics be analyzing it? Ah, oh, they are. Along with everything else at the crime scene. It's just a replica that I asked them to make for us. I'm afraid I don't follow. I have a plan, Aslan. Hear me out, okay? Go ahead. We should make a copycat crime. Not a real one, of course. Just something that'll trick Tiger to come out of way. We can prepare a fake murder and use this replica to alert the media that Tiger struck again. If this was just any other killer, I doubt it'd work, but this is Tiger we're talking about. Someone with such a strong sense of justice won't tolerate his name being dragged through the mud. Even if it knows this is a... That's amazing! You're a genius, Lion Lion! As Lion grabs my shoulders. For being a killer, Tiger is a prideful guy. If he finds out that the police, no less, is trying to ruin his name, he will lose his mind. Before I can give an answer, Aslan takes a calling card replica out of my hands. Partner! In fact, 
Why don't we go even further and make the chief a fake target? D you really think he'll agree to it? If it's for a good cause, he won't mind. Partner. And I consider catching a serial killer who's been a pain in our butts the last few months a good cause, no? Well, when you put it like that, probably. Yeah. Yeah, the bean. Should I contact the chief now then? Nah, don't fret. I'll take care of everything for you. Are you sure? Yep. I'm not the leader of the criminal investigations department for nothing. Let Pa show you what he's made of before you can't call me that anymore. <laughs> okay, okay. When should we put the plan in motion then? Hmm. This evening? What? Are you serious? The faster the better, right? We don't know when the tiger will strike again after all. Not to mention the amount of times he takes from murder to murder to is getting shorter. That's true. Can we actually do it? Okay, got it. I'll help with some details. We might need to make the story more believable. I even know someone from the Target News Agency who will get here at the drop of a hat once we call him. Partner. God, Lion, what will I do without you? You'd be hopeless. <laughs> you got me there. Okay, I'll go on ahead with the preparations then. Could you send me the number for your contact in the news? I'd like to have it, just in case. Sure thing, I'll send you a message. Got it. Thanks, partner. You're amazing. Yeah, I try. See you later, Aslan. Ta -ta. Aslan starts to walk away towards the hallway until something makes him stop in his tracks. He comes back. Lion. Yeah? Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Ta -ta. Smell you later, partner. What a weird morning it's been. Well, no matter. Let's get to work. And time skip. Right? Time skip. Time skip. Ah, <sighs> time goes by fast when you're concentrating. What are Vaslet's already finished with the preparations? I only need to call Patrick for the scoop and we'll all be set. Maybe I could get some coffee from the machine on the second floor in the meantime. Ah, <sighs> they'll never get used to these horrible strange orange stripes on the wall. Who designed this building? Thank God I don't have to see them unless I'm moving around from floor to floor. Anyway, coffee, coffee. Huh? Who's that? I don't think he's from this division. Wait a second. He seems familiar. When I start approaching him, the red-haired man makes eye contact. Ah. What? Hey! Yeah! What the? Aslan's calling. Hello? Hey, Lion! Did you fetch the chief of police from the office? We're ready to move the plan along. Hey, Aslan. Sure thing. Uh, should I call Patrick now, then? Nah, don't worry. Already took care of it. What? Are you for real? <laughs> Looks like my catchphrase is out running off of you. And yeah, Patrick was glad to help when I told him you referred me to him. I see. That's great. I'll go ahead and get the chief, then. Yeah, the bean. That's my partner. With a smile on my face, I hung up and put the phone in my pocket. Okay, no time for distractions. Let's do this. Chief Barrows, we're ready for the- Oh, where is he? That's... odd. Smells like blood. Please tell me this is a joke. He couldn't have been- No! Step out of it, lion! You've got to stop assuming the worst every single time. Let's just make sure first. And yeah, take one step, then another. And another. And another. Until I'm right next to the desk. Then I look behind it. Sprawled on the floor, over a small pool of blood, lies a small cart with the image of a tiger's eye. And an unmoving corpse of Arden Barros, the former chief of police. I fucking knew it! A red-haired man comes out from the cupboard on the right side of the desk. This guy was the one on the streets. I knew I recognized him from somewhere. He just put on a wig and some makeup to cover his burn scar. You police moron, set me up! And if he's here, there's no one else he could be but... Tiger! Hooray! You earn a fucking gold star! Now you better tell me what the hell is going on! Did you kill this guy to try and pin it on me? Oh, honey, you shouldn't have! Uh, hey, I didn't do it. Excuse me, you're the one who killed him. This is bad, I'm gonna lose my job. Hey, I didn't do anything! I didn't do anything! Get! 
Didn't you kill him? Dipshit. Would I be asking if I did? I'm a killer, not a fucking liar. You should sort out your standards, man. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he's actually telling the truth. Who would actually believe that? Like, seriously, the scene is pretty damning. For both of us. Even if you didn't kill him, you don't exactly have a clean record, you know? <sighs> Look, I... Over there! Oh, no. A number of officers enter the office. I can see a few colleagues speaking from the doors entrance as well, including Carl. Carl! So it's true. Unbelievable. It's just as Mr. King said. What? Put your hands in the air! <sighs> Reluctantly, Tiger does as he says. Can't beat a gun, after all. Tiger, you're under arrest for the murder of Arden Barros and several other people. You have the right to remain silent. One of the officers handcuffs Tiger's wrist and starts leading him towards the door. Make way! Make way! This man is dangerous! Before Tiger disappears from my field of view, he glares at me one last time. I won't forget this. Keep walking! Hey! hey I get it already! Was there outside, I turned to the remaining officer in the room. Hey, what you mean just now? Did you know the chief was murdered even before he came here? He scowls. Playing dumb wouldn't help you, traitor. Wait, what? What do you mean, traitor? I'm a detective! There's no way... There's no way to treat your superior! The officer ignores me and points his gun at me. What the- Aslan! Where's Aslan? That's Mr. King to you. What? Unbelievable! And considering your involvement in this, the only place you belong is in this filthy jail. Mixed Darby. This can't be happening. What? What are you talking about? Involvement? I came here to get a chief just like you told me! Didn't we plan to make him a fake target just this morning so that Tiger won't... So, just so that Tiger will make his appearance tonight? Heaven's sake, Darby. How would I even accomplish that in such a short time? Do you think that you will resort to spouting fallacies and nonsense the moment you get cornered? Yikes. I never expected this from you. No, I... Then again, never expected you to be Tiger's accomplice either. The way you knew so much about him... I should have seen the signs. No. No, I was just doing my job! <sighs> Please, just take them to the dissension center. Can't be. Right away, Mr. King. It isn't true. Someone tell me this isn't true! Lion Darby, you're under arrest for being an accomplice or serial killer in the murder of Arden Barros. Although I can't stop knocking my knees together, my feet are stuck to the floor. I don't even register the words coming at me, just the cold metal of the cuffs against my skin. My legs inevitably start moving when I feel a rough tug on my wrist in order to make me walk. Just a moment, officer. Aslan approaches me and leans in as if he wants to whisper something. Thanks for your cooperation, partner. You're welcome! This... Ah! Uh, this dude! He was planning to set me up from the very beginning! With my plan! You son of a... My son outburst catches everyone off guard. The officer, my colleagues, Carl, all except for him. I'll kill you. I'll freaking kill you! <laughs> no matter how much I struggle, no, ma no matter how much I scream and flail, I keep getting carried off while Aslan grins sardonically. Gah! Stay here. Right after shoving me like I'm the vermin of the earth, the officer closes the door. Where would I even go? Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Hi, Tiger! Tiger! Now please make your acquaintance, Dippu. Wait, why did they put this in the same detention cell? Uh, How should I know? It's not like I'm happy about it either. You're the little dipshit who set me up after all. Oh my god, can you stop that? I already told you it wasn't me. You think I was born yesterday? A lot of people in the police force are fucking stupid, but I know a damn smartass when I see one. You and that pompous butthole who acts like he's got a lion's mane up his butt. Also, fun fact, Aslan also means lion. Both of you set me up. You're half right. Uh, what? The initial plan was to lay a trap for you with a ta fake target. It was originally my idea, not gonna deny that. But judging from the fact that you got here so quickly without knowing what the hell was going on. 
and how everyone thought the chief was dead even before coming into the room. I dig my nails into my hands. That dingus must have murdered him and planned to pin the crime on both of us. Huh. And people say I'm the douchewad. Well, you are a killer, even if you say you're doing it for the greater good. Okay. I won't deny it. I'm surprised you're not losing your poo over all this, especially considering how you acted before. I mean, even I'm a freaking mess right now. I thought you'd be... angrier? Oh, make no mistake, I'm seething. But I need to cool my head if I want to get out of here and murder that scumbag. Ugh, if I kill him first, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I still need my job back. Tempting, but that would be a mercy. As tempting as it is, it would still be a mercy. He'd have it too easy. No, that... Uh, that bastard needs to rot in jail. Kinda mild for my taste, but wouldn't be bad to see the trash go where it belongs for once. He absolutely deserves to be punched, though. <laughs> oh, that I can do. Still, it's too early to think about how we're gonna deal with him. We can't do anything while we're stuck here. Dipshit. You're not wrong there. Can you stop calling me that? My name's Lion. Well, excuse me, princess. Well, you're not allowed to call me princess either, unless I'm your princess. <laughs> Patience, Lion. Patience. You can always punch him later. He must be angry, because I'm still technically part of the reason he's here. Also, I have a feeling that putting a police officer in prison is probably one of the worst things that could happen. I mean, heck, especially if he is as prideful as he is. If he brings that energy into prison, he's gonna be in a world of hurt. Alright. He must be angry, because I'm technically part of the reason he's here. Speaking of names, I'm guessing Tiger's not your real name either, right? No shit. Okay, patience over. I swear to God, if you keep it up with this hot and cold attitude, I'm gonna start calling you Dickwad for the rest of your life. Fine. The name's Oz. Happy now? It's a start. Uh... Whatever. So, Oz, we seem to have- no, we definitely got off on the wrong foot. But if we both want to get revenge on that walking garbage, we need to cooperate, work together. Tell you what, Bambi. Bambi? If you can use that giant brain of yours to get us the hell out of here, I'm game. I even know someone out there who can help us. Ah, you got yourself a deal. After discussing a new plan, we wait for a certain someone to show up. Oz nods at me, and again to position. It's showtime. I lie on the floor and close my eyes. All right, you two. Time for your meal. But no funny bear. I lie on the floor and close my eyes. All right, you two. Time for your meal. But no funny bear. Hey, what happened? Uh, what do you think happened, you moron? Of course they freaking collapsed. But why? Oh, God, for the love of... So much for being righteous. All you cops are the freaking same. I need a call for him. Hey! You gotta leave them alone, butthole! What if they die? Well, die! Oh, God, they didn't trade me for this. The guard touches my neck with two of his fingers to feel my pulse. He'll just call someone. He starts fiddling with his clothes. Hold on. Didn't surveillance catch this one time? God! And down he goes. What a freaking moron! I'm glad I remembered he was the one on duty today. Huh? How is someone this dumb on the police force? Well, he's very athletic, reliable, and kind-hearted. I shouldn't have asked. After nabbing the key from the guard and opening our handcuffs, we proceed to undress him so that Oz can't put on his clothes. Once we cuff him, Oz takes off the red wig and smudges off his makeup. Okay. All yours. I untie the hairband on the wig and put it on. Those cameras make me nervous. Are you absolutely sure they're not working right now? Yeah, don't worry. The memory's full. How do you know? Little old Carl Renard. Huh? I'll tell you later. Alright, we definitely still need... We definitely still can't exit through the entrance, even if the camera's out of the way. That's not counting the reporters that must be outside. Uh, you're right. How do we leave then? Huh. The second floor in the back might be doable. Thankfully, this building has windows on both sides. Sounds good to me. 
I just hope you don't leave me behind. Unlike the Lion Trash King, I'm not a fucking traitor, Bambi. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got guts, Bambi. I'll give you that. You're not so bad yourself. Can't believe we jumped from a window on the second floor and freaking survived. Yeah, second floor is not that bad. In fact, no matter how good or bad my plan was, I can't believe we even managed to sneak well enough to go unnoticed. What's the security always this lax? It actually kind of irritates me how easily we were able to escape. Oh well. I'm not part of police anymore. Okay. Here we are. For the first time since we stopped running, I take a look at a place Oz has brought us to. And I immediately recognize it. You've got to be kidding me. Bambi! Ah! For God's sake, Bambi, move your butt already! Arthur is already not gonna like this. But we've really got no other choice. Alright, lead the way. Who would have thought? Of all places, the Bear Theme Cafe. Oh, that I'm complaining, of course. Welcome to a humble abode. Thank you. The cafe has a bit of a different feeling now that it's empty. Okay. Give me a sec, okay? I'm gonna go bring Arthur. All right, sure. Oz heads to the back of the shop and starts going upstairs to what I assume is the floor they live on. Hey, Artie! Got some big freaking news to tell you. His voice gets more and more distant. Arthur, you there? Until I can't hear anymore. It really is the same cafe, huh? Guess the other employee Arthur mentioned this morning must be Oz then. Ah, <sighs> I'm pooped. I'm about to sit on one of the nearby tables when a pastry from the shop's counter grabs my attention. Ah, oh, they all look so good. Wonder if... With a bounce of my step, I approached the glass display, only to have my hopes instantly crushed the moment I noticed the sign next to the empty plate. Where'd out a berry pick? No! Uh, Bambi. Seems like Arthur hasn't arrived yet. Uh, what are you doing? Before I can must, before I can muster a reply, he follows my line of sight and hums an understanding. Hmm. Enough said. My pastries are freaking delicious. Uh. Come on, could you at least show some reaction? Actually, I kind of, I kind of already knew. Uh, what? It's funny to be honest. I was here this morning. You're shitting me. Ah, sorry. I met Arthur and all. He gave me his recommendation about a latte and a pastry, then headed to work. Huh? You don't say. Yep. Well, well, what? Did you like the bear bun? Please tell me you're joking. Huh? Why would I joke about this? But don't tell me. Oh my god, you don't remember. Remember what? A certain incident with a bicycle? For a few seconds, Oz looks at me like I've grown another head. Then his eyes whine. Oh, frick, that was you? Lord, give me the strength for I will kick him in the balls. What the hell, dude? I even recognize you with a wig! You don't even remember the poor person you almost ran over? Hey! I was in a hurry, okay? It's not like I remember every single person I see on the street. Clearly. I can't believe I'm actually more shocked about this than having my bun destroyed. Is my face not forgettable? It's true that we don't usually remember faces from people we don't know, but... <sighs> Look, I'll make it up to you, okay? Those are the pastries and desserts we sell here, made by me anyway. Really? Why are you surprised now? No, I mean, Arthur said that his other employee helped him bake. I didn't think you actually made everything on the menu. Not everything, just the sweet stuff. Arthur handles regular cooking and the drinks. Yeah, I see. Yes, whatever. Water under the bridge and all that jazz. Good thing we made it, eh? Yeah, thank God. Not God, thank us. We're the ones who got out. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yep. Home sweet home. I wouldn't be so sure. Ah! Arthur! Where were you, man? I was looking all... Over. For you. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, God, indeed. He does not look happy. Ozzy. Got a lot of nerve asking me where I was, Ozzy. Yeah. Look, I did what I had to, okay? I even wore my usual wig and makeup. 
was obvious as hell that they had some dirty trick up there, but but I couldn't just let a copycat. Oscar. That is exactly the reason why you should have gone. Why do you never think about the consequences of your actions? This impulsive nature of yours is gonna get you killed someday. <sighs> I'm fine. You worry too much. Oscar. I think I don't worry enough. What's the point of being your informant if you're just gonna do whatever you want? Informant? Hmm. Ugh, can we continue this some other time? I know if you notice, dude, but there's someone else here. You can yell at me all you want later. Uh, hi! Great way to get to know people. Just witness a random argument and hope for the best. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I didn't know we had a... Huh? You look familiar. Yeah, I actually came this morning. Of course. Ah, you're the one who had an important day. <laughs> That's me, all right. Yes, I should introduce myself properly. I'm Lion. Well, once again, it's nice to meet you, Lion. Likewise. He helped me escape the police detention center. What? Oh, well. Way to drop a bomb, man. What are you doing? He also worked for the police. What? Technically not anymore. Is he doing it on purpose? I need to sit down. Yeah, bad. Look at Oz, demanding an explanation. He just shrugs. I don't like beating around the bush. At least give me a warning next time. Fine, whatever. Come leave this guy. Why is this happening? Artie? He'll explain everything. I see. Then he betrayed you. That's rough. Artie. Ozzy. I need us uh, to make sure first. Oz doesn't say anything, but he nods. Lion, you're aware of what we do. Probably more than anyone, considering you were a profiler. Yeah, I hadn't figured out Tiger had an accomplice, though. I guess I'm one of them, too, now. What can I say? I'm more suited to gathering information from the sidelines, finding it in my surroundings, making small talk. Be online or offline. No wonder Oz hasn't been discovered yet. Author seems to be pretty meticulous. But that's besides the point. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? I do, and I'm okay with it. I... Sacrifice a lot of things to be a detective. Aside from a couple of people online, I don't have any friends. I'm not speaking terms with my family. Let alone have the time or energy to date. Maybe it's not even the most desirable or healthy thing to do for someone, but... My career was everything to me. It was the only thing that gave me purpose. The only thing that made me feel like... I had a soul. Like I was good for something. Like I existed. That. Ugh. He stole my very life from me. That's why. No matter what. I'm going to get revenge. <laughs> well, Artie? <laughs> Alright, Pumpkin. You've certainly got resolve. Welcome aboard. Does that mean? <laughs> Hell yeah. You can stay, Bambi. You're gonna be a great team. All right. I'm glad you're in agreement. That means you won't mind sharing a room, will you? Ah! Wait, what? Huh? What do you mean, Arthur? Why? Well... Well, I do have an extra bed for occasional visits. I don't have that many bedrooms, you see. Only two. Then... However, considering you brought them here, Ozzy, I think it's more than fair that you share a room with Lion. You certainly don't expect me to do that, do you? I mean, we wouldn't even be in the situation if someone had listened. Scary has gotten a whole other meaning now. Don't mess with Arthur if you know what's good for you. <sighs> Fine. Remember to add the partition. Yeah, yeah, I know. Bambi! Follow me! Yes, sir. Huh. That's some partition, alright. You take the right one. Yeah? The bed. Oh, sure. Once Oz takes off his shoes, he jumps right into the blue bed and winds into his pillow. <sighs> Slowly but surely, my feet finally step into the room and I start gazing around. It's a nice room. It's alright, I guess. What's with the monkey plushie? It's a bear. A bear? 
That's not a bear. <laughs> yep, a bear. Or at least an attempt at one. Arthur made it. He's not very good at arts and crafts, but he likes cute things, so he decorates his side of the room. I thought his room was a... Uh, well, the other one. Nah, Artie's too nice, so he usually leaves a bigger room for guests. I guess this time he was really pissed. And he probably wanted us to get to know each other better or something. Oh my god, I'm I'm roommates with a serial killer. Holy frick. I see. After a slight pause, Oz gets up from the bed. Something the matter? Nah, nah. What do you ask? Because you've been acting all fidgety since we got here. You haven't even sat down yet. The sharp has attacked this guy. Seriously, what's up? I bite my lower lip and hold my arm. Sorry, I guess I was feeling a little awkward. I don't even have my stuff with me and the police must be looking all over for us, so I doubt I can get back home anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But hey, you're not alone right now. We're a team, remember? They'll get you your clothes and other things you might need. Bambi. So drop that droopy face already, Bambi. It smiles suits you more. Heck, even your angry face. Oh, shut up! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Ah. Uh. You can't be serious! No words are necessary. We just nod at each other and hurry over towards Arthur. Arthur! What's wrong? Something happened. Look for yourselves. Arthur points at a TV, which at first glance seems to be broadcasting the latest news. The target news agency. Bambi! Wait, Bambi, look! Ryan Fraud is silvering police station. Aslan King is giving a speech while officers, reporters, and curious bystanders listen. As expected, both Oz and I seem to have added to the police's wanted list. But the most shocking thing of all is the news header at the bottom of the screen. Aslan King, soon to be chief of police, appointed by the Sidarian government. Swearing ceremony held in 10 days! What? What the? Man! Damn it all. Damn it all! 10 days. Until Aslan becomes the chief of, of police. To be continued. Anyway, that was Kill Trade. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this demo for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. From what I hear, Killer Trait is going to have 11 total days, and it is going to be a commercial game. However, I'd be more than happy to play like the full game once it releases. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.